Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use an STL file, a polygonal mesh, something that you'd normally use for 3D printing as a reference for creating a BREP model in Fusion 360. So STL files are great for 3D printing. Everything is defined in terms of triangles, as you can see in this example here. But really what we're interested in, if we want to do something like CNC milling or CNC routing or a CNC lathe or something like that, is a, um, is a B rep, a solid body in Fusion 360. So I don't have any dimensions for this particular tool. Uh, so I'm going to use this as a reference and get all the dimensions that I need from here. This tool is a nut driver, basically, and it's for turning these knurled nuts that go onto 3.5 millimeter audio jacks. Um, the knurled outer part of the nut is not really that important. What's really important is these, these two slots. And so having a tool that can engage with those and allow you to turn it easily is the goal. Um, and also being able to not mar the surface, the kind of the panel that these um, nuts are going onto. That's the whole purpose of the tool, and I think for mine, I'm going to try and make it simplified. I don't want these knurled, uh, the knurled outer part here. I don't need it, and I definitely don't need those teeth in on the inside. It's just going to cause problems, and it's kind of hard to do. I think probably in the end, I'm going to turn this on a lathe uh, without any CNC, and so trying to do that would be kind of crazy. I don't need it. All I need are these two lugs that engage with the slots on the nuts. So I'm going to make a simplified version that looks like this. And uh, I'll show you how to get there without even having any of the dimensions, just using the uh, mesh, mo mesh model as a reference. So here we go. The first thing to do is insert that mesh model. There are two ways to do it. You could go to the Create menu, hit Create Mesh. That'll bring you into kind of a whole mesh workspace that has an Insert Mesh command. But the simplest way from here is to just go to the Insert menu and choose Insert Mesh. And I'll choose the file and hit Open then um, really there's not much to do here stl files are unit lists they don't say in the file itself whether it was drawn using inches or millimeters or miles so you have to choose here uh, what the unit type uh, is based on how the person created the mesh and i know that this person used millimeters so i'll leave that and then um, it'll be convenient for me the origin is over here the models over here just in some arbitrary place and it'll be con convenient for me to center it so that the origin is over the top uh, or right in the middle of this thing. So I'll hit OK and that's it. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, get a uh, kind of a profile drawing of this wrench, uh, just one side, and then I'm going to revolve it around. That's how I'm going to approach making this thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, I have a work plane conveniently because I centered this that goes right through the middle of it. I'm going to use that as my um, section plane and the way that I can create that drawing from this is to go to the create menu and hit create mesh section sketch it's asking me which body that's the body and then it's asking me which plane I'm gonna select this plane so you can see kind of a preview of what it's gonna look like it's got all the things that I'm interested in which is the location of that lug you can see it's right over the lug conveniently and uh, the inside dimension here, the inside dimension here. I don't really care about the outside dimension here, but uh, that's going to be helpful to just have it. So I'll hit OK. And now I'm pretty much done, at least for now, with the mesh body. There's not too much you can do with it. You can't really move it. You can't select planes, uh, select faces from it or anything. So, you know, this is our workflow is getting it into sketches and then uh, creating a B rep from that. So I've got something that looks like a sketch here, but and there is something called Sketch 2 that got created, but I can't select these lines. They're, they're not actually sketch curves. Even though this is looks like it's closed, a closed loop of sketch curves, there's no profile to select here. This is uh, something special. So with inside this, within the sketch, there's something called the mesh section, and that's what that is. If I want to actually make a profile that I could revolve, I have to actually edit the sketch. So I can either click it there in the browser and hit Edit Sketch. And then uh, I want to essentially trace this. The way that I do that is going to the Create menu and hitting Fit, fit Curves to Mesh section. I'm going to choose lines because I'm just drawing lines here and I'm just going to zoom in and click on the first point, the second point, and just keep clicking points. Uh, I want to capture this entire kind of loop of sketch curves. 
and it doesn't look like it's creating them uh, all and it kind of implies that you're just creating one line but uh, this is working when I click the last one you can see it actually creates a sketch profile because it turned blue there so I'll hit OK and that could be it but uh, if you remember what the thing looked like it actually sliced right through the lug so it would be useful for me to know what this looks like without the lug as well if that doesn't make sense right now it will in a moment but uh, I'm gonna just kind of create this extra couple sketch curves you'll see how those help me later I'll hit finish sketch and if I go to revolve right now I can just click this profile without that extra bit and choose as an axis the center line that goes through the origin and then hit OK. So I'm pretty close already. If I turn on the mesh body, I can see I've essentially got uh, what I promised, which is the inside circle here um, being at the right dimension without the teeth. And uh, I've got the um, inner, inner hole here is the right size. And I've also got an outer um, surface that is without the knurled teeth there. So I'm pretty close already. Now what I need are those two lugs. That's kind of the most important part for me. So how can I get those? I think what I need is um, they are, of course, in that sketch. But if I were to just kind of, you know, revolve those around, first of all, they would be kind of curved and they're not technically supposed to be curved. It probably would still work. But what I really want is to just extrude those as little boxes here. How big are they? I don't know right now. So uh, maybe what I need is to look at this from the top view and uh, and capture that kind of rectangle. If I was looking, sorry, from the bottom, I would see a little rectangle here. So again, I'm going to create a uh, mesh section sketch. And when I click this, it's asking me for the mesh body, which is again, I'll hide my new body. It's this body. And what is the plane? Well, I don't have a plane necessarily that goes right through this box, you know. So I think I'm going to go back a step and make sure I can get a plane that shows up there. Let me hide my body that I've created, bring back the mesh. I don't need my sketch right now. Uh, and so what I want is a horizontal plane that goes right through there. I can use an offset plane to do that. Uh, and I'll base it off of the origin. So where's the origin? Right there. I'll choose that plane that's kind of in the same orientation and if I look at it from the side I can uh, make sure that it lands in the right place I can't see right now where those teeth are those lugs so I'll go to visual style and choose hidden edges and so now I can see that if I do this it's it's a plane that goes right through those lugs I'll hit OK and I'll use that to create my mesh section sketch here's the mesh body and here's the plane the one that I just created you can see what it looks like. It's looking good. Shows my lugs, shows everything else. I'll hit OK and see what that looks like without the mesh body on. So that's going to be helpful. Um, let me turn off that plane I've just made. So um, if I could <clears throat> just extrude that right there, that bit right there, and get it to be the right height, then I'd be done. So how can I do this? First of all, we know that just because I've got a mesh section uh, sketch here, it doesn't actually allow me to do anything with it until I go into the sketch and choose uh, create for fit curves to mesh, sec mesh section and again for this one I'll use lines again and I'm going to zoom in and what I'll do is just essentially trace this box Okay, turn blue, so I've got a uh, profile there, and I'll do the same. Oh, uh, <laughs> okay, so it's, it's continuing the line over there. That's okay. I'll just keep going, and I'll delete lines I don't need afterward. Okay, so uh, let me go through and say, all right, this one is not useful. I'll hit delete. And honestly, these uh, ends here are not useful because I essentially want them to be... Um, I want these boxes to be bigger, longer than they need to be, wider than they need to be. Let me get rid of some of this stuff that's confusing here. Uh, I'll even hide the mesh section sketch there so that you can see what I'm doing. These are the, the parts that I want to extend a little bit and then uh, enclose. So the first things I'm going to do are add a couple constraints so that as I'm moving things around here, it doesn't screw up what I've got because this these are in the right place. So I'll use horizontal vertical and say that needs to be horizontal. So does that. So does that and that. These two should be vertical. And uh, I also want to lock a couple of 
points so that as I'm dragging around, they don't start moving. Okay, and then um, let me bring back the mesh section sketch just so you can see what I'm doing here. I'll hit escape. And uh, I'll just select these two points and drag them out. I'll do the same thing over here. I don't even care that these two are not vertical from each other. Uh, if I if I did care, I guess I could add a constraint there. And uh, then I'll just make the final lines so that I have sketch profiles that represent these lugs. I'm fine with them being bigger than they need to be, and you'll see why it's fine in a moment. So I'll hit uh, finish sketch, and if I look at the body that I've got, I want to take these two profiles and extrude them. Now, uh, I could just click extrude, choose those two profiles, but where am I extruding them to? I don't exactly know. I don't know how far down they need to go. I do know they need to go up to this edge here, but I don't know how far down they go. So to get that help, maybe what I can do is turn on my old sketch here. And I know that's what they look like from the side. So I need them to go all the way to the top of that line and to the bottom of that line. It's actually pretty easy to do if I just go to start and choose from object. I want them to start extruding from there. And I want them to extrude to another object, which I can use this point here. So uh, most people, I think, use to object to kind of make it extrude to a body, but you can extrude to points from a sketch. So that works out perfectly. Right now it's trying to cut but I want it to join, and when I hit OK, I think I'm all set. Looks good from the side, right? Matches that profile, and it matches the profile from the bottom as well. So that's it. Hopefully that helps you uh, understand how you can use a mesh model from an STL file and get to a B-Rep in Fusion 360. Good luck.